supervisor to let him know that, you know, without any crime being committed, I don't have to present my ID. Well, he actually got a call on you. Well, that, uh, what, what crime have I committed? Well, so anytime somebody calls in and reports... Welcome to U.S. Corrupt Cops. Today we uncover a disturbing case where corrupt officers invented laws to arrest an innocent man. <laughs> Stay tuned, hit like, share, and comment below to help us shed light on this injustice. If you like this video, press 1. On June 15, 2016, First Amendment Auditor Deontay Valentine was filming in a public parking lot for the Municipal Court and Police Department buildings in Greer, South Carolina, when he was approached by Corporal Sharada of the Greer Police Department. Mr. Valentine continued to film the encounter and later shared it on his YouTube channel. What's your name and badge number? I'm Corporal Shrad of the Greer Police Department. How are you? All right, I'm all right. Okay. Is there any reason why you're videotaping? I'm just curious. You're not in any kind of trouble. There's nothing here other than we got called and told that you were walking around the parking lot. So. Any particular reason for it? No, you're not going to answer. So we're just going to have a stare off because I'm recording you and you're recording me. Is that what we're going to do? Do you have your ID on you? Have I done anything wrong? Well, you're recording a suspicious activity, which puts this into a category of suspicious activity. This means that Terry versus Ohio, I can detain you until I can determine or deny that this Terry, is a Terry v. Ohio says suspicious activity is not enough for reasonable reasonable call for ID. Would there, there's already a call on it. So, yes, so suspicious activity, is that, a, is that a felony or a misdemeanor? That's a misdemeanor. No, it's not. Yes, it is. And I can't believe you just sat here and lied. You have to go ahead and give me your ID. Uh, can you call your supervisor to the scene? I am a supervisor. I need another one. Okay. I need a lieutenant or somebody else. In South Carolina, Corporal Sharada asked Mr. Valentine for his ID, but Mr. Valentine refused, instead requesting a supervisor. South Carolina does not enforce a stop and identify law requiring individuals to provide identification to police unless they are under arrest or legal process. Greer's city ordinance states that obstructing law enforcement officers by resisting their duties is illegal. However, the Supreme Court's Brown v. Texas decision in 1979 protects individuals from punishment for refusing to identify themselves without reasonable suspicion of criminal activity. The Fourth Circuit Court's 2021 ruling in Wingate v. Fulford reaffirmed that valid suspicion is necessary to enforce such statutes. Therefore, Mr. Valentine cannot face criminal consequences for withholding his ID unless the officers had reasonable suspicion to lawfully detain him. Actually, actually, I, I, I'll go and do this type of thing. Okay. Yeah, I'm so. just curious. I mean, I mean hey. Activity, so why are you asking for my ID then? Because you're not answering me. And when you're not answering me, how do I know you're in this parking lot to come shoot it up? It's called a Fifth Amendment, right? So I can check on that if it's suspicious. And the part of that checking is to identify you. So if I get it, it's suspicious. A felony or a misdemeanor? Hey, sir. Again. What name, badge number? Sergeant Forrester, 301. All right, how you doing? Good. How can I help you? Well, he contacted me. He wanted my ID for no reason. So I need a supervisor to let him know that, you know, without any crime being committed, I don't have to present my ID. Well, he actually got a call on you. Well, that, uh, what, what crime have I committed? Well, so anytime somebody calls in and reports suspicious activity. It's suspicious. It's suspicious of felony or misdemeanor. Neither one, but he asked oh, okay, thank you. So he said it was a misdemeanor. So now we have a conflict on which... Sergeant Forrester suggested Corporal Shirata could detain Mr. Valentine because of a suspicious person report, but such reports alone don't justify detention. Reasonable suspicion requires specific facts indicating potential criminal activity, as established in Florida VJL 2000, where an accurate tip about a gun wasn't enough. Therefore, officers can't detain solely based on a report. Courts review all facts to determine if reasonable suspicion existed. You know, we have a conflict with Hold on, Kate. Whoa, sir. whoa, whoa. Taping, taping whoa. The parking lot in today's whoa. day and age. That's fine. Whoa. That's fine. You ain't got to whoa nothing. Whoa. Today's What's your name and badge number? Uh, my badge number is 201. It's whoa. Lieutenant Holcomb. Whoa. You, now you, Let me have an ID. This, this is an intimidation factor right here. Let me have an ID. 
please. What crime have I committed? What, what crime, crime have I committed? An ID. What crime have I committed? An ID. You're gonna you're gonna be failure to uh, listen to a law enforcement officer ask you for an ID. What crime have you I got committed? An ID? What crime have I committed? Videotaping our parking lot and walking around the police. Is that a crime? Parking. Yes, sir. Right now in the, it in is. the day and age that we're dealing with. Yes, sir, it is a crime. What crime have I committed today? Anytime there's a suspicious person. Is that a felony around, or a misdemeanor? It's a, let me see. Whoa, you whoa. You got, you got the camera or you're going to jail. Now you got to see, you I got one hand one, on my camera. One, whoa. two, three. Don't show three. me. You're under arrest. Whoa. Now under In jurisdictions with stop and identify laws, individuals can be required to provide identification to law enforcement officers if the officers have reasonable suspicion that the individuals may be involved in criminal activity, even if no crime has been committed. Mr. Valentine's refusal to identify himself led to his arrest by Lieutenant Houle. This legal requirement stems from the concept that reasonable suspicion can arise from behavior that might initially appear innocent but still warrants investigation. Therefore, while Mr. Valentine had not broken any laws by refusing to identify himself initially, the officer's reasonable suspicion could justify his arrest under these laws. Guess what? That's not a right. That's a right to stay in jail because if we don't have an ID and name with everything, then you stay in jail until we figure out who you are. So you can tell us who you are. Or you can stay in jail. What, what crime have you huh? You're interfering with the police. You guys came to approach me. Yes, sir. And I asked you for an ID. And what crime have I committed? Interfering with the police. What crime? For you suspended for Listen to me. Listen to me, because I, I know you're not deaf. I don't got to listen to you. Interfering with no, the police. I was not. Yes, you no, were. I was not. I just I do this all the time. That's fine. Well, guess what? You're going to see the inside of the South Carolina jail. We got a call. The officers discuss Mr. Valentine's potential arrest, debating whether they had reasonable suspicion to detain him for filming in a public parking lot. Legal precedents indicate that filming public officials and spaces is protected by the First Amendment, though recent court decisions have varied on whether such filming can justify reasonable suspicion. While the officers' concerns about unusual filming activities are acknowledged, merely filming a parking lot likely does not meet the threshold for reasonable suspicion under current legal interpretations. I'm sorry. I've got your phone. Mr. Valentine was arrested for interfering with police but released 2.5 hours later. The outcome of his case is unknown. Greer City Attorney John Dugan defended the officer's actions citing heightened security concerns post the Pulse nightclub shooting. He criticized Mr. Valentine for not providing identification or reasons for filming, suggesting it could have prevented the incident. The Greer Police Department pledged to improve officer training. Critics faulted the officers for hostility and excessive tactics, noting they lacked grounds to demand ID. Despite legal uncertainties, Mr. Valentine maintained a respectful demeanor. On August 15, 2022, New Mexico State Police Officer Emmanuel Rodriguez was on patrol when he noticed a white pickup truck that appeared to match the description of a vehicle flagged in a Be on the Lookout Bolo Alert. Typically, a Bolo Alert is issued for a person or vehicle associated with a crime, indicating law enforcement's interest in locating them. In this instance, the Espanola Police Department, referred to as the City Police, had erroneously identified this particular white pickup truck as being involved in a series of armed robberies in the area. Consequently, 
Officer Rodriguez promptly initiated pursuit of the white pickup truck and pulled over the driver. Lincoln, 756, suspect in that uh, robbery, 76 and 106. Hey, let me see you get out! Put your hands up! Open the door! Put your hands up! Walk back! No, hey, no, open, let me see your hands! Walk out! Walk out! Walk back! Let me lift up your shirt! Turn around. Lift up your shirt and turn around. Walk back. Turn around, walk back. Walk, walk. Keep on walking back. 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 Get on your knees. Get on your knees. Hands on your head. Stay right there. Keep your hand on your head. A 17-year-old high school student named Adam Pacheco, a former standout athlete with a 3.8 GPA, was pulled out of his car at gunpoint and placed in handcuffs. Despite his impeccable record, he was subjected to this ordeal while simply driving home from school. He had committed no wrongdoing, yet Officer Rodriguez forced him to kneel on the road, hands on his head, under threat of a pointed gun. These types of stops, termed felony stops due to their high-risk nature, typically involve numerous officers, squad cars, and sometimes aerial surveillance due to the potential for violence. While the officers may have been legally authorized to conduct this stop, the core problem stemmed from their careless misidentification of Mr. Pacheco's vehicle. It was disheartening to witness the officers frisk and interrogate Mr. Pacheco, all while questioning him about his pickup truck. Right here. You got any weapons on you? Yeah, he's gonna poke me, stick me? No? You were in school the whole time? Yeah. I live here. This is my house. That's, that's the same truck? Same, that's the same, same truck, bro. Yeah. yeah. Cool. How How old are you? 17. 17? Who's this truck registered to? This is my truck. This is my dad's. Your dad's? His name's Adam Pacheco. Okay, who's Lisa? Lisa. That's my stepmom. Where's she at? She's at home. Where? Oh, that's the, that's the little theater. Yeah, let me see it. No, that's where the mom is. Which is Lisa, right? Yeah, we have to call because this is a truck that we're used to. Come up over here, man. You're not under arrest right now? Yeah, he's just detained, man. He's detained, okay? There's going to be some guys. Your, your truck is just a truck we've been looking for. It's, it's right been involved it in like, some stuff. Yeah. And yeah. some others. So, that, that's what, so that's what you're saying. Just, just hang out for now. Okay. This has been at your house the whole time? I've never. I only got to the phone. Okay. Like the labs there? Yeah. Okay. Like I said, man, you're, not, you're under arrest, brother. Just, just have a seat.
At this juncture, there were a minimum of five patrol cars present at the scene, with multiple officers attempting to ascertain if they had apprehended the correct individual and vehicle. Following the interrogation of Mr. Pacheco, the officers comprehended that he was a minor who had spent the entire day at school. Mr. Pacheco further conveyed to the officers that he rarely took the truck out of the house, suggesting that it couldn't have been involved in any criminal activity. Gradually, it became evident that the officers were acknowledging a significant error. Officer Rodriguez, in fact, was overheard acknowledging his uncertainty regarding whether the correct vehicle had been stopped. This underscored Mr. Pacheco's age of 17 and the fact that the truck was registered solely to a female, his mother. You want to call your mom? What do you want to do? You want to call your mom? Call your mom? Where's your phone at? It dropped, I think. I think it left it in No, it dropped. Oh, it dropped right here? I think it dropped now. Okay, I'll be good. Hey, okay, I'll be good. I'll call your mom, okay? No, it's your wallet now. I don't know if this is it, though. This is it? No, no, but I don't know if it's like the actual truck they saw on the company. You know my mom's huh? I know, that's what I'm saying. There's no way. The truck's there's no way. Yeah, to both of them? No, it's just under her. It's just her? Uh, he's 17. Yeah. Yeah, no, that's what I'm saying. In this scenario, a potentially dangerous situation unfolded as officers mistakenly conducted a felony stop on the wrong vehicle, apprehending Mr. Pacheco, a minor. The encounter was highly stressful, and there was a risk of a tragic outcome, as any misstep by the officers, particularly Officer Rodriguez, could have led to the use of a firearm against an innocent minor. Fortunately, Mr. Pacheco remained calm, cooperated with the officers, and ultimately avoided a fatal outcome. Officer Rodriguez released Mr. Pacheco, who then contacted his mother. Despite clarification that he was not being arrested, Mr. Pacheco's mother expressed extreme dissatisfaction with the situation, emphasizing her son's minor status. The officers explained that he was temporarily detained to ensure he wasn't a suspect in recent robberies. Hey bro, just come back here. You got nothing on, no weapons? No. I'm gonna take off the handcuffs, sir. Hi. Uh, I don't know. So, I, there's some cops here at the house. And I, I tried to pull into the house and I got pulled over. And then, I don't know. Oh, can you take this off? Hello, man. Driving house, see, bro. Hey, so, um, your son's not in any trouble right now. Um, uh, just being detained, detained for right now. Um, uh, so the truck that he's driving uh, matches the description of uh, an armed robbery that took place on the scene. Okay. Well, like I said, it, it just matches the description, so uh, we're just so he's on he's under arrest, but the police the police department wants to talk to him. Okay, he's a minor. You will not That's that's fine. Uh, like I said, we're just we're just holding him for Espinal Police Department to get here. Just outside, just outside the house. Uh, we're, on, we're on, we're on, at the intersection of 106 and 76. Okay, so you're not going to talk to him until I get there. Okay, that's fine. What's up? That happened today? Yeah. Where was that's that happening? So in the city, but your truck was, like, uh, given? Yeah. Oh. It, it was, so, so yeah, I understand that, man. But the information we got and everything, that's, that's what we got, you know. But he's also not I didn't mean to scary that bad, but... So it's the same truck? Oh yeah, same. Well, it was a, that's a plate that we were given. Really? Yeah. While Officer Rodriguez claimed he didn't intend to frighten Mr. Pacheco, 
It doesn't alter the reality that both the New Mexico State Police Department and the Espanola Police Department neglected their responsibility to thoroughly verify whether the white pickup truck they were issuing a be on the lookout, BOLO, alert for was indeed the vehicle involved in the robberies. This error had the potential to jeopardize Mr. Pacheco's life. Nevertheless, Mr. Pacheco's mother desired to have a conversation with Officer Rodriguez, the initial officer who stopped her son. Their discussion further underscored her justified fury regarding the entire incident. Is that your mom? Yes, my mom. Oh, okay. Huh? I'm at the house. Here's a cop. He wants to talk to you. Hello? Are you, uh... Can you... Ma'am? Right here. Hello? Hello? I don't think it's on speed radio. No. Hello? I'm talking. Oh, sorry, ma'am. I couldn't hear you. So, I guess there was a confusion, but this was a truck that we were given out to uh, look out for. I am livid. You know what? No, I understand that. And you guys have him handcuffed. He just got out of school. You're talking about a 4.2 GPA kid. I understand, ma'am, but that's the information that we're given, you know, so that's 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 why we you pulled them over. Your information before. Yes, ma'am, uh, but that's the information that we were I given. Your name, and I, need, I need your badge number. Okay, Officer Rodriguez. And what is your badge number? 7135 oh, one, now. 135? Yes, ma'am. You will be hearing from my attorney. This okay. Is that's fine, ma'am. You, you literally detained him and put him in handcuffs. He's a no, I understand, but at the time we don't know that, so that's why we were that's why we were rolling for it. What are you doing with him now? So he's gonna get released. He's gonna go home. This is ridiculous. You yes, ma'am. Hearing from my attorney. Okay, that's fine. What is your What is your matter? Is this Espanola PD or who the hell are you? So Espanola PD is the one that received the call, and they're the ones that put out the bolo for the vehicle. Uh, this is state police. This is ridiculous. And nothing in your right mind says he's a. No, ma'am. Well, we don't know. We don't know because the vehicle is not registered to him. It's registered to you, right? It's registered to his dad who has the same. Well, your 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 name is Lisa Pacheco. No, her name is Daniel. Yeah. Uh, Daniel. Detective Anaya will call you and he will answer more. Espanol Police Department. He'll answer more more questions that you have. You know it's illegal to detain a minor. So. You realize that, right? No, ma'am. So uh, that's we have probable cause to pull over the vehicle. So that was a probable cause, you know. I want to see that probable cause. Am I trying to release you? Okay, that's fine. In the video, Officer Rodriguez acknowledged the confusion and confirmed that Mr. Pacheco could leave at that moment. However, despite Mr. Pacheco being a minor, his mother persisted in seeking explanations for the traffic stop and questioned whether there was justifiable cause for it. It's important to note that law enforcement can arrest and detain juveniles without a witness or guardian present if there's probable cause to suspect a crime. Even though there might have been valid grounds, these reasons lose their validity when based on inaccurate information, rendering the encounter an unlawful detention. So you have to call me. Give me, let me get you. Didn't even ask for my cell phone number. So how the hell do you expect him to call? So me? you you can call uh, Detective Anaya, Espanol PD. So just call Espanol PD, Police Department and have a uh, Detective Anaya give you a call. No, he, you're the one that did this. You did this. He didn't do that. So. I so he's the one. He's the one that put out that bolo, ma'am. He's the one that said said for us to look for that vehicle. So he will answer more questions. We you just want to know why you did this. Because, because you didn't, you didn't get like I said. Because, like I said, so we, ma'am, whenever, 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 excuse me. Give me your supervisor's name. Okay, so it's Lieutenant Casales. I will call him because apparently you're an idiot. Okay, go, go ahead, ma'am. That's fine. There you go. What's up? You're good to go, bro. Yeah, yeah. No worries. She's just freaked out. I was freaked out. No, that's fine, man. Is that her? No, that's, that's my Nina. That's my oh, okay. All right. Yeah. So you're good to go? Yeah, you're good to go, man. So I can take the truck? Yeah, you can take the truck. Sorry, babe. Okay. What's going on? No, so we were given information that this uh, vehicle was possibly used in an armed robbery earlier in the day. So that's why we pulled it over. Is this what was but, going on by my Curdy? Yes, ma'am. Okay. Yeah. So that's why we pulled it over. But once we realized it wasn't, I mean, it's not him, so he's he's good to go. So. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Okay. All right. Yeah. So that's 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 the whole the whole reason. Okay. So, yes, ma'am. All right. You. You're welcome. 
Mr. Pacheco was released to a relative who arrived shortly after the officer spoke to his mother. As of the date of this recording, a lawsuit has been filed against the city of Espanola for flagging Mr. Pacheco's pickup truck on the Bolo. The lawsuit claims that Espanola police officer James Mayers made an alleged error, misidentifying Mr. Pacheco's truck during a quick investigation hours after a robbery. Officer Mayers spotted a similar truck on surveillance footage near the crime scene, and despite clear differences, concluded it was Adam Pacheco's truck used in the armed robberies. The suit accuses the Espanola police of negligence and asserts that Mr. Pacheco was unlawfully searched and imprisoned, citing various civil law violations and alleging injuries such as fear, worry, and restricted movement. The specific amount of money sought from the city by Mr. Pacheco was not disclosed. Intriguingly, two days after Mr. Pacheco's stop, Police arrested and charged 31-year-old Ricky Martinez in connection to nine robberies and the fatal shooting of a Blake's Lauterberger employee in northern New Mexico. Despite this, city officials in Espanola have consistently refused to address any allegations. Mayor John Ramon Vigil stated that the city does not comment on ongoing legal disputes. Meanwhile, Mr. Pacheco in his online college football recruitment profile expressed his desire to continue playing at the collegiate level while maintaining a 3.8 GPA. On November 2, 2021, Travis Hines, a globetrotting YouTuber and avid urban camper, ventured into Bethany, Missouri City Hall seeking information on the local parking conditions. Huh. Well, yeah, I'm having difficulty with the parking. Um, what do you mean, mean well, parking? Where's the sections for the two hours? Because. Uh, I'm a little confused. Uh, there's, I was going to choose some spots around the library. I want to go to the library, but there's this, there's this two-hour parking spots. And does anybody ever have problems with parking around here? No. Oh, okay. Well, I, I feel very unique in that matter because I'm, I'm really miss. I'm really confused. Can you direct me to the person I need to talk to about the parking situation? Well, if you have a problem with the yep. parking situation. Yeah, because I don't know. Cause I'm parked right in front of City Hall. I can is that a problem with the two-hour parking in front of City Hall? I don't know where you keep coming up with this two-hour parking. There's, a, there's, I saw two signs. Do you, need, do you need me to show you a picture of that? No. Like, are you pranking me right now, or are, are you really serious? I don't I'm think. I don't. I get the impression you you don't realize how bad the like the streets are and the parking is. Then you're 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 not you're not uh, really uh, under you're not really. Mr. Hines raised his concerns regarding two parking signs close to the library. Following a few minutes of discussion, a City Hall staff member contacted the Harrison County Sheriff's Office to help address the situation. I mean, the parking is a lot better um, up north in those cities that I've been to. I guess I got called, um, or you guys are just here for me? Yeah, we're here for you. Okay, all right. Um, I'm not you want to direct? Hey, don't you have a seat right here? A seat? Yeah. What's We're going to talk to them in the back and find out what's going on. All right. Well, just that, all right, yeah, because you didn't, you didn't hear the conversation, no, so. No, but we'll talk to you too, so. <clears throat> all right, well, I'm the one that they called the cops on, I guess. They buzz, buzzed the cops on. And I, was, I parked right out here. And I was asking about the parking situation. Apparently, we can uh, park across the street. Because, <clears throat> I mean, right you, you know about the two-hour signs, right? The two-hour limits. Are you blocking me from exiting? Is I'm trying to figure out why I'm being called. Okay, well, I, I guess you want to talk to it. Yeah, all right, fine. You want to talk to the... Have a seat for me. What's the problem? What's the crime? I'm just trying to figure out what's going on. Well, I'm, I've, I've been sitting in my car for all morning. I just want to... Okay. So, I mean, I'll move over if you're afraid I'm going to escape. I mean, am I being detained? Officer Harris stopped Mr. Hines from leaving a building and told him to sit down, even though he insisted he wasn't being detained. The legal issue here involves the Fourth Amendment, which protects people from unreasonable searches and seizures by law enforcement. 
previous Supreme Court cases such as Terry v. Ohio and California v. Hodari D. have established that not every encounter with the police qualifies as a seizure. The crucial factor is whether a reasonable person would feel free to leave in the given circumstances. Despite Officer Harris's denial, his actions, physically blocking Mr. Hines and telling him to sit down, would likely be interpreted as a show of authority, making it reasonable for Mr. Hines to believe he couldn't leave. As a result, a court might conclude that Mr. Hines was, indeed, seized under the Fourth Amendment, despite Officer Harris's claim to the contrary. What's the, uh, yeah, these guys, these guys talk to him. What's the deal? We're just trying to figure out what your concern is. Okay. Uh, so she gave her side, you got a full scope of what she said. No, I'm asking you what your concern is. Why no, are you satisfied with her story, I guess? It's... I guess, yeah. Okay, well, yeah, I, so, so you understand where, she, where she's coming from, and I'm, my side is I'm, I'm interested in finding a good parking spot. Okay, there's two lots right here if you're looking for on-square. Yeah, and, and if we could walk out there, I mean, Hello. I'll show you where I'm parked. What? Where were you parked? I'll show you. Just show me right here. You, oh, I, are, am I being detained for a crime? We're trying to figure out what's well, going on. Well, then I, it'd probably be easier to like point from the you know closer area to this parking where I'm at and where I can park uh, outside. You guys prefer to talk inside? Yeah, it's cold outside. Oh, it's because okay. Well, that's reasonable. We're not sure what your concern is. is what this I is a two-hour parking. I'll get a okay. ticket for two-hour parking. You know what? Get a ticket for two-hour parking. Okay, so I guess I didn't ask the question directly. Will I get a, par a ticket for? Parking longer than two hours, the answer is no. Okay, well then that settles it. All right. Do you have your driver's what, license on your report? What? What's driver's license? What is it? A so I can identify you. Make sure you don't have any warrants. Well, I mean, first we have to establish a crime. No, I don't. Yeah. That's, Making that's, contact with you is good enough. Yeah, that's here. fine. And I've you can make contact. Here. Hey, I've been called hmm? here to Harris? make contact with you. Okay. Officer Harris. Well, who, you who's the caller? Failing. They are. Well, no, they were the buzzer. They if, buzzed, if right? You are failing to identify yourself to me and not give me your ID, yeah. we'll take you to jail. You want to cry. Officer Harris says he can ask people to identify themselves when he approaches them. However, the law generally requires individuals to give their ID only if the officer has a good reason to suspect criminal activity or if there's a specific law in the state saying so. Some states have laws allowing officers to arrest those who refuse to give their ID. For example, Missouri has such a law but it doesn't force people to comply with an officer's ID request. It's important to note that in certain cases, just a 911 call may be enough to detain and identify someone in states where showing ID upon an officer's request is required with reasonable suspicion of criminal activity. The Supreme Court confirmed this in the 2014 case of Navarrete versus California, stating that information from a 911 call can create reasonable suspicion if the call is reliable enough for the officer to trust the information. Oh, you want to you want to you want to charge me with a crime? No, we want to identify yourself. We want to identify you. Well, I don't. That's, I got. I'm sorry, but I have to enforce my Fourth Amendment rights. So okay. well, I don't you, understand. You have the right to. If identify you think yourself to if you think your ID. if you think your prosecutor is going to uh, back you up on that, they want to follow through on this charge. Okay. Oh. We'll see how those arguments go. Yeah. They tend not to go too well in your favor. Okay. Just doing this, well, what, you, a charge of what? Do you not want to give me your driver's license? Well, do you want to give me your driver's license? I don't have to give you my driver's well, license. Well, what's, I don't understand why you can't because give I'm me. I'm making contact with you. I'm making contact with you. I'm going to run and these sure two. no warrants. Are you, are you asking ID sir, for your own curiosity? Sir, no, we're, we're, or for the, the betterment listen, of the. We were called up here because there was someone that was irate. I raise okay. Hall. The reason we're asking for your ID is because a crime has been committed. We're not oh. trying to charge you with one. Well, if you think you want to follow through on charging me with a crime, I mean, see with your prosecutor, so, your city prosecutor would want to, you know, go through. So here's the question is, why don't you identify yourself? We'll all move on. Well, why don't we have a, why don't we understand, establish the, the crime? Mm -hmm. And we got a fourth amendment here. We got to, we got to break, we got to get through here. All right. And I mean, there's steps to take with that. If, if you want to, if you want to fully charge me with a crime, then I guess you'll have to arrest me, you know, and and uh, follow through on that. In this situation, the sheriff's office is claiming that Mr. Hines committed a crime because of his supposedly irate behavior. 
but they haven't specified exactly what crime he's accused of. The important legal question is whether Mr. Hines actually broke any laws in Missouri. Even though being irate could be a problem in certain cases, it doesn't seem like he violated any specific Missouri laws here. The statutes related to disturbing the peace and harassment don't seem to apply because he didn't make loud noises, use offensive language, make threats, or get into a physical fight. There's also no evidence that he intentionally caused emotional distress. Plus. Even if he did express his concerns in a way that caused some distress, he's protected by the First Amendment when it comes to complaining about the parking situation. So based on the information given, it looks like the accusations against Mr. Hines may not have a legal foundation. If that's what you, if you think that's what uh, your city prosecutor is going to uh, support you on, sure. I mean, I, I, this is a contact thing, I just asked him about parking, mm -hmm. this would be laughed out of court, Harris. Yeah. But if you want to follow through, yeah. Are you failing to give me your ID? Are you failing to give me your ID? Are you failing to give me your ID? Okay, I'm willing to exchange Face the wall. IDs. Face the wall. All right. Put your phone down. All right. Put your phone down. Mr. Hines refused to show his ID to Officer Harris, got arrested for second degree harassment and peace disturbance, but the charges were later dropped. The Bethany officers messed up a simple situation, didn't understand Missouri's ID laws, and turned it into an unnecessary arrest. Instead of helping, they accused Mr. Hines without cause. Despite living a nomadic lifestyle, Mr. Hines handled it well, staying respectful while questioning the officers. He often deals with law enforcement due to his choice of parking in public lots, but consistently defends his rights without breaking the law. It's unclear if he'll take legal action. On February 20th, 2023, the Chillicothe Police Department got a 911 call from a gas station worker reporting an intoxicated man causing a disturbance among customers. The employee mentioned that there were children present at the gas station who had to leave due to the problems caused by this man. Let's kick things off by tuning in to the recorded 911 call. Hello? Hey, can you hear me? Um, yeah, you're going in and out. Go ahead. Okay, so I'm a worker down here at Dutch's BG gas station. Okay. Uh, I have a guy up here, and he's drunker than Mofo, uh, bugging my customers. And we had some kids out here. He went and bugged them, and they took all out. But he's still here. He's out from my store. Okay, do you have a description of him? Uh, yeah, he's a white dude. He's got short hair. He's wearing a black short shirt with, uh, like, uh, Bart Simpson on the front of it. And, like, decals on the back. Okay. And he just walked around the back of my store, so I couldn't see him. But I think he's wearing, like, uh, black pants. Do you think he, can he walk there, or is he in a vehicle? He walked here. Okay. He definitely walked here from one of the hotels behind, but... Okay. And what was your name? Black pants. Go to listen to the other check for him. All right, thank you. You're welcome, buddy. Based solely on the 911 call, it seems that the male individual was causing trouble at the gas station. This information was conveyed to the officers on duty by dispatch. However, it's important to emphasize that the officer's responsibility was to investigate the situation rather than hastily concluding and making an arrest. Keeping this in mind, let's delve into the actions taken by the officers during this incident. Two officers from the Chillicothe Police Department arrived at the scene and identified the male subject based on the provided description. Upon making contact, they immediately requested his identification and this entire interaction was recorded on one of the officer's body cameras. Hey. Don't let me chase you, man. Come here a second. What's going on tonight? I was going back to my hotel. Okay. Down here for some more alcohol tonight? Yeah. Okay. Got an ID on you, man? Yes, sir. Yeah, you're gonna, you're gonna set that down somewhere. Yes, sir. We got a call in you early here. You were causing a disturbance? No, sir. Yeah. Yeah, you're good. Looks like he had to close the store for you and everything, man. He didn't want you coming back in there. Yeah, no, I was just walking back a lot. Okay. Get, let's, let's see your ID, yeah, man. Yes, sir. I'm sorry about that, sir. I just walk back to the hotel, you know? Where are you from? Uh, Southern Ohio. Okay. 
Drink some alcohol tonight? Yeah, I was just walking back. How much you have to drink? So I'm just walking back. How the... much have you had to drink? I am a drove. I haven't drank that. Didn't ask you that. I asked you how much you had to drink. Oh, uh, one white ball. The male individual in question is Bud Swayze, a native of Ohio who had recently returned from a mission trip to Southeast Asia, providing drinking water to disadvantaged families. Earlier that evening, prior to the 911 call, Mr. Swayze had a welcome home dinner with friends at a local restaurant and had checked into a hotel near the gas station where the incident took place. As observed in the footage, the officer initially instructed Mr. Swayze not to walk away and to engage in conversation. Subsequently, the officer proceeded to interrogate him, requesting his identification. Considering these elements, it could be concluded that the officer was now effectively detaining Mr. Swayze. It is commonly understood that a police officer is permitted to detain an individual if they have reasonable suspicion. A situation wherein they reasonably believe that a crime was, is being or will imminently be committed. This suspicion is based on the officer's informed evaluation of the circumstances and the known facts. Based on this assessment, it is plausible to assume that the officer might be lawfully detaining Mr. Swayze, especially given the escalating nature of the 911 call. What was the, what happened when you were here earlier, man? There's some kids out here in the parking lot, you were vaping in the store. What was going on with that? You just in a, having a bad night or? What's going on? It's like I said, we got a call on you earlier, okay? And you'd already, you'd already left. I apologize for what I said. Who are you here with? No, I'm just here with myself. Buddy. You have a hotel at uh, the Christopher, you said? All right, what I'm brings you? Back home, yeah. What brings you into town? Anything in particular? trying to find out what your story is, man. Okay. Yeah, no, no, I'm cool. It's not a trick question. No we're, no, we're cool. Um, so, if you want to talk about it, um, a lot of the Israelis, um, run Assad, I don't know if you guys know about Palestine and stuff like that, there's a lot, there's a lot of foreign entities in your town. I know you guys uh, busted the old massage parlor. Down there you thought like a couple girls give them a little rub and tug for 60 bucks. It was a big bus. What are you? Like, you you have to you're some sort of like white supremacist or some shit like no, that? No, Why are we talking about different ethnicities in this town? No. And then okay. tying that into our rub and tug massage parlor. Right. What, what was your first question? What led him to that kite? I just wanted to know what the story was. Why I was why literally just walking down the street. Okay. So why are we talking about people of different ethnicities all of a sudden? Where would that come from? How is that tying to your story? We're just asking about you. Right. No, I'm this little guy walking down the street. I was like, hey, I'm in town. Hey, uh, where's a good restaurant? They told me Applebee's. Okay. Well, B-Dub. I'm interested in your line of thought on, you said, yeah. talking about Palestine and Israelis. What well, finished yeah. your thought? I'm genuinely curious at this point. Well, I'm just saying. How does that tie into you being in Chill Coffee? Yeah, I'm just walking off street. I, I appreciate you guys talking to me. I really do. It's important to emphasize that the officers had no legitimate reason to inquire about Mr. Swayze's whereabouts in Chillicothe or his opinions on any matter. Yet, this was precisely the line of questioning the officers pursued. Arguably, they transitioned from a voluntary interaction to an investigative detention, preventing Mr. Swayze from leaving. Furthermore, not only was Mr. Swayze subjected to a pat-down and search for weapons, but the officer also disregarded the request for consent and conducted an illegal search. Weapons on you, anything, man? No, sir. No, sir. Place your hands on the front of that vehicle. Sir. Yeah, yes, sir. We're okay. It's gonna patch you down for weapons, okay? No weapons, right? No knives, guns, bazookas? No. Do you have anything in your pockets at all? Is it illegal? No. Careful check. It's yes or no question. Careful check, man. Anything in your pockets? You're, you did a safety check. Okay. Alright, relax. 
In this situation, the officer conducted a Terry Frisk, a limited search for weapons allowed by federal law enforcement training centers. However, there's a question about whether the officer had a valid reason to frisk Mr. Swayze. According to the law, a Terry Frisk is only justified if there's a reasonable suspicion that the person is armed and dangerous. In this case, it seems that the officer may have violated Mr. Swayze's Fourth Amendment rights because there was no apparent reason to believe he was armed or posed a threat. The rules state that a frisk isn't automatic for everyone who is stopped. There must be a reasonable suspicion based on specific grounds. Since Mr. Swayze was cooperative and not showing any signs of aggression, one could argue that the officer didn't have enough justification for the frisk, potentially making it an unlawful search. I want to check your eyes real quick, okay? Yes, sir. Just relax, turn toward the man a little bit. Just want you to follow this pen with your eyes, okay? Uh, we're, not, we're not doing a public okay. intox, so. Okay. You don't want to do the test? All right, turn around and put your hand behind your back. For real? Yeah, you're under arrest. Damn. Solely in talk by intoxication. Mm -hmm. Oh, we just told you I did not do the public intox. Looks like we are tonight. Relax your hand, man. Put it together like you're praying there. You're, you're good. You're good. You want to or... Yeah, better. Where's your other one? Do you have two on you? That's fine. I'll get back to you. You're fine. Trust you, guys. I just walked back to my hotel, man. Yeah, you've told us that a couple times now, man. You just had too much to drink tonight. Just going to the drunk tank right out. You're a little, you're a little bit of uh, peanut butter jelly is the president of all this. No one's back in your hotel to take possession of you? You're by yourself. One Destiny, one Ranger, I'll walk around and chill coffee off my own. I was literally walking back to my hotel, bro. We get that. What is this, JD? What currency is this? Uh, Pie box. Dude, what do you think the wolves in the back? That's Pie I figure. It's my part. It's good. I'll put this in your wallet. I got some uh, coins from other countries too here. Make sure I get those picked up. Yeah, I'm on a mission too. Like, I'm I'm you guys. How you doing that? Because you caused us some issues tonight, man. It's weird, the block is hot, bro. What do you mean, what do you mean by that? Just like, I didn't even do anything. Well, we got called for you because of your conduct inside of BP earlier. Apparently, you were in some sort of verbal altercation. We weren't looking for you. But you weren't here anymore when we got here, and now you're trying to come back. And they're just trying to no, do they're locking the, They're locking the doors on you. Yes, sir. And we're talking to you, and it's hard to keep you on one, one train of thought, man. So, My dude. Yeah. Anything on you, shoved in you, you're going through the scanner. If you got anything in, take anything into the jail, it might be a felony. I was just walking by. Okay. So nothing else illegal on your person, nothing illegal on you, right? Because it will be a felony, it's felony commands. If you go into the jail, they have a body scan. They got, yeah, they're going to scan you. I had a, I had a vape pen on you. Are you into vape pen? Yeah. Hi, right, man. You're going to do what? Uh, I got. We good? Yep. I'm going to head over to the... Uh, the scenario involves an incident where an officer attempted to conduct a sobriety test on Mr. Swayze to assess potential alcohol influence. Mr. Swayze refused the test, leading to his arrest for disorderly conduct based on alleged public intoxication. However, Mr. Swayze had the right to refuse the test, and the arrest without a warrant required probable cause which seemed lacking. The officers failed to justify the arrest based on the information from the 911 call alone. The arrest was deemed unlawful as it solely relied on the officers' observations. It was later discovered that the officers spoke to the gas station employee who made the initial 911 call only after Mr. Swayze's arrest, raising concerns about the proper investigative procedure. Yeah, 
say this? Yeah. I confiscated. Okay, did he end up buying anything? He bought these bag of chips and a thing of Pringles. With? With like, real money. With real money? I forced him to pay with real money because okay. I wasn't taking whatever that whatever was. Whatever it is. Real, it's from know. Thailand. I asked him about it. It's yeah, he said, he said it was from Thailand, but he also said it was from somewhere else in Japan. He's a little, here's, he tried to pay for some chips and stuff with some of his tie Yeah, I forgot to tell you that. I seen you guys pull money out of his pocket, and it was yeah. like, oh. He also tried to pay me with that, I forgot. But he, this is technically his bag of chips. That is, yeah, he did pay for No, he does not own the x Mr. Sways got arrested in Ohio for disorderly conduct because he was drunk. The cops charged him under a specific law that says if you're drunk and doing stuff that could mess up your finances or someone else's, it's not okay. However, when the cops interacted with Mr. Swayze, they didn't see any behavior that could cause harm or damage. Even though there was no evidence, Mr. Swayze spent more than eight hours in jail and had to walk five miles back to his hotel after being released the next morning. Eventually, the state dropped the charges, saying they weren't going to pursue it. Now, Mr. Swayze is planning to sue and is looking for a lawyer. On March 1, 2023, a group of Fairfield Police Department officers were conducting a traffic stop involving a parolee suspected of possessing illegal narcotics. While the officers were investigating the drug-related situation, Mr. George began recording the encounter. In response, Officer Nicholas Amavisca approached Mr. George and promptly assaulted him simply for filming the incident. Can I help you? Can we help you? You can go film all you want from down there. You know you can't stay here. Do not shine that light. Into you my can couch. go. Don't touch me, dude. You can go over there. Don't you're too touch close me, to my partner. That's a lawsuit. You were too That's close a lawsuit, to my partner. Bro. You need to back up. Yeah, what's your name? Badge you were too close to you can back up. You want to go in handcuffs? Call your sergeant. You want to go in handcuffs? I Do you want to go in handcuffs and go to jail? I dare you. You can go There's film no over there. Law that says you I need to film over there. Do not call your you sergeant. Don't film over there. You call are your sergeant. sergeant. Are you a supervisor? Seventeen. Yeah, call your sergeant. You can go film over there all you're you want. You're getting fired, you dude. You're too close. You're getting fired. You know what your, your use of force policy you is? Can you too close? Do you know what your you use of force close. policy is? Back up. Do you know what your use you of force policy is? You want to go to jail? You want to go home? I dare you to arrest me, bro. I'm not breaking any <laughs> laws. What's your reasonable articulate suspicion? Back up. You were too close to my officer. Back up. I can stand where You on. cannot. Public not when you're sidewalk. too close to me. Public sidewalk, buddy. Not when you're too buddy. close for our safety. You want to go home? Oh, you want to go to jail? What's more important? Public safety you wanna go home, or you wanna go to jail? safety? You want to go home? You want to go to jail? Look at this, guys. I don't care if you're You're live right now. So are you. Back up. Yeah. Is your body cam on? In this situation, Officer Amavisca is accused of physically confronting Mr. George by pushing him three times and threatening him with arrest for being too close to an investigation scene. However, the body cam footage suggests that Mr. George was more than 10 feet away on a public sidewalk and well within his rights to record, as stated in the Fairfield Police Department's policy 474. This policy allows the recording of officers during their duties and prohibits interference with lawful recordings. Furthermore, the department's policy emphasizes exercising restraint and discourages discretionary arrests for activities like interference, failure to comply, or disorderly conduct when individuals are recording officers in their official capacity. The question is, whether Officer Amavisca's actions were justified based on the established policies and Mr. George's lawful recording from a public space. Back up. You saw him touch me, right? You saw him touch me, Because you were right? way too close. Oh, you're too close, bro. Oh, really? You can't be What's walking, the law? You can't be walking What's up behind my partner. Whatever What's I feel is safe. Whatever you Whatever feel, feel is safe, safe, which means you were too that close. That is not a law. It give me a lawful law order. Give me a lawful order. I'm giving you a lawful order to go over oh, there. Because you're a police officer, you any order that you say is a lawful order. Go over there, or you can go to jail. You're gonna, you're gonna arrest me? Um, yes, I will happily sergeant. arrest you. Go over there. Call your sergeant. I'm not moving. I'll give you one more chance I'm not moving. to back up. I'm not moving. Okay, that's fine. Don't you touch me. Um, Don't you touch me. Do not. What are you doing, dude? Oh! You're a Give me your hand. Give me your hand, bro. I'm not resisting. Give me your hand, man. You are. I'm not resisting. I'm not resisting. <laughs> well, You get to get a little bit of 
Do not turn off my phone either. I do, I do not want you to shoot me. You don't have a choice. You're in custody. I don't have a, I don't have a choice. You're under arrest, though. Lawful search. Really? It's considered a search into to arrest. Yeah. You know your laws. You can check it out. Oh yeah. What are you arresting me for? I'm resisting obstructing an investigation. Sit up. Oh really? Yes, really. Really. Officer Alma Visco, along with another officer, crossed the line by physically restraining Mr. George during a traffic stop. This happened because Mr. George refused to step back from a public sidewalk, leading to his arrest for supposedly obstructing an investigation and resisting arrest. The officers argued that Mr. George was filming too close to the traffic stop, but California law permits recording from any public space. Officer Amavisca's actions, caught on body camera, revealed an abuse of authority, including an unjustified search and mocking of Mr. George for recording the incident. Don't touch my camera. Stop. Do not touch my camera. You're under arrest. Do not touch my camera. Do not touch my camera. I don't know what part of you thinks you run this show here, homie. Homie? I'm not your homie. You're right. You're not. You're law enforcement. You're supposed to be, uh, Enforcing laws, man. I just enforced one. What law? Resisting or obstructing. What law did I break? I just told you. What law is it? 148 of Penal Code. 148G? I didn't say 148G. G. 148G? I didn't say G. The one that I'm allowed G? to record the police? Under Penal Code 148, it's considered a crime to intentionally impede, delay, or obstruct peace officers or authorities while they carry out their official duties. This offense constitutes a misdemeanor punishable by a maximum sentence of one year in county jail and fines reaching up to $1,000. In the present scenario, an initial argument could be made suggesting that Mr. George didn't actively resist the officers as they grappled him to the ground and placed handcuffs on him. Mr. George himself explicitly stated that he made no effort to resist. Additionally, even supposing Mr. George did resist, it becomes crucial to re-examine the grounds for his arrest. If the officers hadn't attempted to detain Mr. George initially, resistance wouldn't have been part of the scenario. However, scrutinizing the reason behind the arrest reveals that the entire detainment was, in essence, unlawful from its inception. Bring your feet in your chest and help you up. Yep. You got my right arm? Yep. One, two, okay, three. here we go. Can you take, can you pull my mask down? Can you pull my mask down, please? Or what? So I can see, it's blocking my face. Thank you, sir. You have I an ID it. on you? I do not. What's your last name? I'm not going to give you my information. Okay, that's fine. I'll just finger for you. Over here. Can you grab my stuff, please? You do know that you are dating this guy on violating my rights, right? You understand that you get way too close to that way in. Way too close, huh? What's the law? Face hey, the car. Don't turn, don't, do not turn off my camera. Hey, do not spread, spread your face. feet. What's the law? I've told you about six times. Resisting. What is the law? Resisting and obstructing How did I resist? Investigation. How did I resist? Because right? you walked up within arm's distance of my partner to her back. That's not safe. Okay, so that's a law? Why are you testing my wrist? Because I'm trying to do something. You're trying to get the camera off? You guys failed to identify. You don't have to arrest me. Yes, you do. For uniformed police hey, officers and fully you? marked patrol How do vehicles. I know you guys are not fake police? You have to identify. That's in your policy, bro. I know what I'm doing. I've been doing this for years, you guys. Can you read? Can, can you read? can you read and write English? I cannot. You can't read and write English? Nope, but I know your policy. It's to identify. So how'd you read the policy if you can't read? Oh, I had somebody tell me. Oh, okay. Yep. Hey, what's, uh -huh. what's your name? Huh? Sure you want to go down like this, bud? Put your hand on top of your, your head. Do not move it. Yes, sir. My hand is on top of my head. I am not resisting. You guys' body cam is still on, right? Oh, That's correct. On. <laughs> so look, I'm going to give you one chance right now, sir. Your job is to when when, a, when one of your coworkers, your, your police officer coworkers, is breaking the law and violating people's rights, you're supposed to stand up for the public. There's not a violation of rights going on. Tell you that right really? Now. You know what the First Amendment is? I do. Freedom of press. Yeah. Yeah, I'm an independent journalist. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. All stories you got too close. Really? Yep. Yeah. That's, That's why you're in handcuffs. 
He's on his way, don't you worry. In the video, Officer Amavisco was observed tampering with Mr. George's personal belongings, specifically turning off his actively recording GoPro and mobile phone during the encounter. Additionally, he mentioned that a sergeant was on the way to provide further assistance. As Officer Amavisca approached one of the suspects from the initial traffic stop and attempted to persuade them to act as a witness, his malicious intentions became evident. However, Officer Amavisca's plan fell apart when the suspect refused to participate in the situation. Sorry, bro, you would have been on your way probably by now, but... Since we got you here, and you're kind of a witness, can I ask you some questions? Oh, man, I don't want to. Totally unrelated to you. I don't, yeah, I'm sorry, I don't want to do, uh, yeah, I didn't see nothing. You watched the whole thing, you even told me. We took I was talking, was not talking to you? You said you saw it. It's on camera, we heard you. Yeah. How many times did I ask him to back up? Uh, it's on camera, is it? I'm asking you. I don't recall. Okay. Shortly after Sergeant Franco Caesar arrived at the scene, he conversed with Officer Amavisca about the incident. Regrettably, Sergeant Caesar hastily made assumptions and promptly instructed Officer Amavisca to take Mr. George to jail without conducting a thorough investigation into the matter. You want to toss this? I'll talk to Franco. Are you good? Thanks, man. Yeah, we're good. We were, so I got one guy in the back of my car. This guy's the driver. This other dude, Lauren's standing behind him. If you're Lauren, he's right here with this phone, right behind him. Yeah, now. He's in, uh, All right. right this car. Well, how right is he related to him? He's not. All right, take him to jail. He's walked up. I gave, I pushed what's, him in the chest, the told him to back up. He thinks, he says he's an independent, independent reporter no. or some BS. I told him to back up and I pushed him in the chest because you're you're getting sued, you're getting sued. Okay. I said you need to back up. I told him like six times. He didn't listen, you need to go to the hospital. So when you do when you right. do the report, obviously you just talk about how the danger the, yeah. the priors on these yeah. guys. And I explained that on camera to him too. He's in the back of the uh, he's in this car. Did he was talk to him? He was asking to talk to you. As Sergeant Caesar headed towards the patrol vehicle where Mr. George was detained, Officer Amavisca continued the traffic stop investigation linked to narcotics. As previously mentioned, they observed the suspect admitting possession of a narcotic but opted to release him with a verbal warning, allowing the individual in possession of the drug to leave the scene. Paradoxically, they chose to apprehend an innocent man carrying a camera instead of the individual with the narcotics. Sit on, man. Sorry, it took a little longer. We had a little <laughs> other stuff going on. I want to take you to handcuffs, okay? I'm not going to trip off what a little bit of dope fell out, all right? You can be going on about your way, okay? okay sir. Just for your sake, no, if you're I'm trying to stay clean, yes, sir. off PRCS, I mean, yes, sir. don't mess around with the dope. I'm sure I you know that, but the whole time I was going, I was my, my shit. Mm -hmm. Okay. Hand on top of your head. Where are you going to stay at? What apartment number? Five. Who are you staying at with? My pops. Oh, your pops is there? Okay. Alright, awesome. you can put your hands down. <laughs> All your stuff is up here on the hood. You can grab that. You're free to go. Where's the where's baby mom at? Oh, mom's in Sacramento. Oh, she's in Sac? Okay. Uh, good, man. Yeah, you're good to go, man. Good to go. Just make sure you get license plates in the car, alright? I'll be honest with you, man. It looks stolen. Hey, boss, your keys are right there on the hood, okay? uh, on the roof. All right. Hey, brother. Uh, you run them out again? No, we. I got a fingerprint him real quick. He didn't want to give us his name. You complain to the sergeant your cuff is hurting. Which side is that? Okay, turn to your left. 
Face the car. Face the car completely. There you go. You ever been arrested before? Um, okay. okay, that's fine. I'm using my car right there. Do you like me to go get it? No, you are not free to go. Hey, this car, if this car is not legal, this car must go with you. Which car is yours? Which car is yours, boss? I have another person filming up the street. Which car is yours? I have another person filming up the street. Okay, find out his name. We'll figure it out. And then once you get the name, run the car's mm -hmm. sitter, whatever, not the legal car must go with you. This way. Okay. We'll get it. Thank you. Appreciate it. Take a seat. Ow. I need to see EMS. My head's hurting. Ow. We'll take you to the hospital. Ow. What? No. Now he's claiming his head hurts, so I'm going to take him to the hospital. Yeah, look. Shine the light on my forehead. He's not giving you a name, too, right? No. Shine the light on my forehead. Look, there's scratches. He popped up. I thought he was just on a walk. I was like, all right. His head hurts, but he caught an elbow. Last minute, please. Was there three you guys here already? Yeah, I showed up. Oh, yeah. She popped up out of nowhere. As we're getting ready to toss the car, and then you get like walked up right behind the Gomez. And... They were with the car, I was with big dude here, and other dudes. He's here. literally like from you to her. Now, this is where things became unbelievably absurd. Shifting to Sergeant Caesar's body camera footage, it was evident that he didn't allow Mr. George a chance to explain himself. Instead, he did something outrageous. Sergeant Caesar turned on his flashlight and directed it straight into Mr. George's eyes holding it barely an inch away from his face. It's important to note that Sergeant Caesar was present to assist and potentially resolve the situation, but his actions only exacerbated everything. Moreover, he openly acknowledged that there was no specific law regulating the proximity for recording law enforcement activities, essentially acknowledging that Mr. George was unlawfully detained. Do you need to talk to him? He was asking to talk to him. I'm gonna help you. What's going on, sir? I'm gonna you, help you. Are you a sergeant? Yes, I am. Well, number one, these cuffs are way too tight. Okay. Number I'll two. I'll adjust that if they can. Number two, my rights were just violated. Okay. 148G, California Penal Code. Okay, that's good. I'm allowed to follow, film the police. Yeah, but to, for a distance, right? These people here are dangerous criminals or have backgrounds that are pretty dangerous. The last thing they want to be doing is dealing with you, right? What's the law that says I have to stand a certain distance? You got to stand. The, the, there, there, there's, there's, there's no law. Exactly. To so, the exact so same to, to so. the exact same distance, but you got to give them the space to work, right? You can't be doing this okay, so. right on them, right? Yeah. Right? It's the same similar so situation, right? Yeah. You can't do, that. You do that. Exactly the same thing, right? Why you you can't do that, do that when okay. people aren't working. That? You see that metal plate right there? Okay. I'm not going to argue with you. You're going to jail. Okay? What's your name and badge number? Uh, Sergeant Caesar 904. Okay. And then All I right? need someone to book. In this situation, the Fairfield Police Department has certain rules, like Policy 826, telling their employees to be respectful and cooperative when dealing with the public. Another rule, Policy 100A, strongly opposes retaliation and promises to protect employees who report problems at work. Despite these rules, Sergeant Caesar is suspected of breaking them by mishandling an incident and wrongly arresting an innocent person. Mr. George's lawyer says that charges are being pursued against him and he plans to fight the false arrest. This raises concerns about possible misconduct in the police department as discussed in a previous video about another concerning police encounter. All right, folks, thanks for tuning in. If you think exposing corrupt cops is crucial, smash that like button, share this video far and wide, and drop us a comment below. Let's spread the word and stand up against injustice together. Don't forget to subscribe for more eye-opening content. Stay vigilant.